I have to be honest with you and tell you that it's been a long time since I did all these things on a daily basis. But it is what I did early on when I first started out. This might give you some new ideas to think about and some refresher stuff. The very first thing I would like to talk about is something that I call the three-stage practice cycle. Hello everybody and welcome to the Steel Lab. My name is James Shelton and we've produced a few of these videos already and we've gotten some really great response for them so first of all I want to thank everybody for that and we had quite a few people send us some feedback and ask us some questions about things and one of the biggest questions that people had was about practicing people wanted to know things like what should I practice um, when should I practice what's the most effective things to practice to maximize my time before I get into this too much, I want to say that this particular series is going to be geared primarily towards the entry level player. Let us assume that maybe we had an hour and a half every day that we could practice. If you have more time or less time or whatever, that's not so important. What I really want to stress here is the division of time being more or less divided up into three parts. And so the three-stage practice cycle looks like this. The first stage, stage one, is something that I'm going to call technical practice. Technical practice is the stuff that's not much fun. It's all the things that every musician has to do to become proficient on their instrument. And it's things like playing scales, playing with a definite time reference, such as a metronome or some sort of rhythm track. And luckily nowadays we have a lot of good options for that. I'll get a little bit more into that later on. But we want to focus in stage one, the first third of our practice time, on things that are very, very meticulous and, and geared towards making muscle memories. That's, that's what we really want to accomplish here, is training our hands and the rest of our bodies too, for that matter, to be able to repeat the same processes accurately every time over and over and over again. And in a little bit, when we actually start working on this, I'll discuss some ways to do that. Stage two of the three-stage practice cycle is going to involve learning something that somebody else has already played. And there are a whole lot of great ways to do that. You can either do that by watching a video like some of the ones we've made or some of the ones that other players have made. You can sit down with a book that has tablature in it or learn something off of a record simply by sitting down and copying it. The important thing about this is not how you learn something that somebody else played, but simply the fact that you do it. And the thing that I'd like to stress about this idea is that no matter what, which one of those methods you choose to use, when you learn something that somebody else already played, I'd like you to spend a good amount of time trying to analyze maybe what those people were thinking about when they did it. If you learn a lick that you like off of a record, I'd like for you to consider uh, you know, what the guy in the studio was thinking when he played that particular thing try to access a little bit of the thought processes that go into other people's creative ideas. In the third stage of the three-stage practice cycle, I would like for you to focus on one simple idea, and that is, how do I get my instrument to make a cool noise? Anytime you hear a player who has an interesting style or did something innovative on their instrument, you can virtually guarantee that they spent a lot of their practice time doing exactly this sort of thing. Pure experimentation with their instrument without any sort of um, care about what the results might be. They're only exploring until they find something that they like. So that can be a lot of fun for some people, and other people seem to have difficulty with that. So if you employ this three-stage practice cycle, here's what will happen. 
In stage one, you will develop the technical skills that are necessary to play your instrument, whatever instrument that is. In our case, it's the pedal steel. In stage two, you will learn the very valuable lessons of the people that came before you about how they thought about the instrument, why they played certain things at certain times, and things of that nature. And in stage three, when you abandon all that other stuff, you will open up your own creativity. You will, you will get your creative juices flowing, so to speak. So we're going to move on now to the next little segment where I'm going to try to show you what I think are the most obvious things to practice, for example, in stage one.